All right, well, welcome to episode 322 of the Clive Barker podcast and part seven of our D&D game, Jericho Squad 77. Yay. Where we left off, the squad had navigated deep into the fifth level of Gregorius's false hell, now infested with real demons from the gulfs. After a long, hard battle with the undead, uh, Ralph met the mysterious magician he thought was dead from his traveling freak show days, uh, the great Tarval. Uh, he'd wanted to initiate Ralph in the ways of hell magic and drive more people to his traveling carnival, Freak Show, uh, but Ralph escaped and thought Tarval was dead. Uh, now that Ralph is so close to the gulfs, he has returned and taken Jonathan, the Nunciate Seagull, with him. Uh, additionally, the Yattering, who had dogged the group for days, uh, Nisqually Flume, was killed. Uh, having rested, uh, the group contemplates returning to the fifth level, uh, uh, the fifth level down, the level of anger. Uh. All right. After the destruction of Midian, after the unraveling of the fugue, after the fall of the unbeheld and the reconciliation of the five dominions, the Jericho organization has expanded and spread itself thin, guarding the breaches and investigating anything that comes through. This Dungeons and Dragons game is the story of one of those teams. Let's begin. you wake up um you wake up in the in your i believe that you went back one to the fourth level where the puzzle box is jammed in the door uh opening okay. the door for you gotcha. uh everybody has rested right you're uh so you're back to all your spells and your hit points cool yes <clears throat> all right so my son is so calling me on room. the phone okay <laughs> <laughs> even though he's just in the next room morning all right <laughs> yeah so uh so at this point what do you want to do oh and i okay. can uh i can start sharing the start screen sharing. here okay so we're back at the magic door right that has the the box jammed in there box appears to be gone i don't see it yeah the box is still jammed in the door oh Okay, okay, well, I, um, you think if we carve it out, out we might be able to open the door? I, I, I wouldn't get too close to it. I wouldn't get too close with Ralph because remember what happened last time? Uh, yeah, uh, so. that that would be a, a big risk. So okay. I think we should go back through the door and keep pushing forward. What do you guys think? Lead yes. the way. Let's go. Okay. All right. So everybody's got wallet, glasses, phone. Let's go. <laughs> uh, let's see. I am moving towards the door. Boom. Okay. All right. You're back on the docks uh, okay. again at the... Uh... In the the uh, the watery area there on the on the fifth level that's full of uh, full of floating corpses and and the the skeletons of the that that you fought earlier, it kind of stinks in here. Um, well, I guess we should uh, get on that raft and uh, see what's on the other side. Do you guys remember what was on the other side? We never made it. We past didn't the... get to the other side. Right, that's true. 
Okay, well, I am going to jump on here, and it seems like our paladin has been, our paladin has been uh, uh, keeping watch. Right? She's, uh, she says she's eager to, to move forward. She says, come Trust on, get on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm on, I'm on. Let's see. And do I have, do I still have my mage armor on? Uh, that lasted for eight hours, and then you went okay. to sleep. So okay. if you want to cast it again, it's probably a good idea, because it'll last you eight hours. Mm, I am going to do that. I am <clears throat> going to cast Mage Armor. And then you don't waste a whole turn in combat if you do it now. And that's one spell of the first slot. Okay. All right, so I do have Mage Armor on. Hey, everybody's here. Hey. Do we... I, I look for the ore. Do we have an ore? Oh yeah, yeah. There, it was like a, it's like a barge pole, you know, that you can kind of push your way through. Okay, I'm uh, moving to the back of it, and I'm gonna start uh, rowing us forward. Okay. All right. Do we guys. need that light on top of the oh. pole? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Good idea. Okay, that's one of my cantrips. So okay. Who's using anything, the? Right? And and uh, Cherdovir is using the barge pole. Yeah, can yes. you yeah. can okay. you cast that on the tip of my pole? Yep. <laughs> that sounded weird. Okay, it says it's a twenty foot radius, and a dim light for an additional twenty feet. So it sounds like it'll get us some extra coverage. Yeah. Okay. There's a little bit of a traffic jam up ahead with the uh, the boats from the skeletons that you fought. But if you you can just kind of shove them aside, and go right. and go through them, we'll try to navigate our way through it. Okay, what do you guys think? Should we stick with this raft, or should we transfer to one of the boats? Well, I think if we take one of the boats, it might help with uh, camouflage. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea, Ralph. Um, <laughs> I, I check the boat. They, they're not quite as big as the one that you're on now, uh, but they, they, they seem sturdy enough. But they yeah. held a lot of skeletons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they, I think they each skeletons had four. Body mass skeletons. Yeah. Hey, I disappeared. From skeletons the... don't have as much body Sank. mass as us. All right. I transferred to a boat. Okay. <clears throat> Are you guys going to all get on this? You could you could probably fit about four. Oh. Or maybe all oh, of no. you could fit on on a boat if you're I think we can all crowded. Fit. Yeah. I push the boat a little bit to the side and kind of like, come on, guys, let's board this boat. All right. Tressa, are you coming? There we are. Yeah, we all fit. Hey, cool. I'm going to spin this baby around make sure everybody fits in the boat there we go and is there a way that we can continue on the boat moving the boat without uh people falling overboard yeah yeah you just use the same oh yeah i mean technically it's a little <laughs> tough because he he built the barge to be like that oh, oh okay. sorry um okay i guess we can just plot on through here yeah i think he's I think he's got it. Is there a way to group all of us in that thing? Okay, cool. Let's keep going. Do I have to move the boat? No, I think Rob's doing it. Gotcha. Thanks, Rob. Like some little like bubble noises. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. I, I do the best I can to row while keeping my face covered by my hand because it really stinks. I think it smells, smells fine out here. Uh, yeah, you would, you lizard. Ralph looks around for a snack. Ooh. Just rough bones. Okay, there's some branches. I push a body out of the way. Ugh. Livingston would know where to lead us towards lunch. <laughs> Uh-oh, what was that? I heard like I a splashing sound. Uh, yeah. Oh, damn. 
I don't see anything. Okay. Let's keep moving. What's this? A log. Does everybody have their guns uh, loaded and ready? I have my claws ready to attack. Ah, claw attack. Claw attack. Okay, uh, it looks like to the right there, uh, you can see that there's another, uh, that there's another pier. Awesome. Well, I make my way to it. On the right side, right? Yeah. Okay, guys, we're almost there. Keep your keep your eyes sharp. Uh, it 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 appears quiet. Uh, you see a, a staircase going down. Is it like a spiral staircase? Uh, yeah. Hmm, it appears so. Okay. Cool. All right. I think this might be the exit to the next level, guys. Um, all right. Uh, I guess I'll go first. And there we go. Okay, Ooh. so <laughs> when you come in, uh, you're on the sixth level. Uh, it's a dark cavern. Uh, it's it, um, there are spider webs, uh, impossibly huge spider webs covering up uh, a whole bunch of upside down crosses. There are uh, caskets on the ground, um, remains of people that are long dead. Uh, and uh, as you look up, a heavily, heavily armored person approaches. Uh, she's walking towards you. Uh, she has a long, wicked black sword, uh, b a bow with arrows, and leathery black wings. What's she's that? walking towards you. Um, Go get her, Shota Beer. Just a second. <laughs> Okay, hey, stop right there. Who are you? Uh, she stops in front of you and looks at you. And then she, she uh, instead of speaking, she kind of looks at each one of you individually. We're the Jericho squad. We don't want any trouble. Who do you serve? Is. Okay, so she, um, she, she starts looking at, uh, at Turdovir. Okay. And, and, uh, she says, what are you called, off-worlder? You're I a long Ch way from home. I am Turdovir. I come from the glorious second dominion of the Imagica. To whom do you pray? I pray to Apixamendios, the unbeheld. Who do you serve? I serve the gulfs. The gulfs are beneath all worlds, hiding in the shadows, influencing your governments. There are some in your world who would know this, I think. So, Sir Dovir of Second Dominion, Tell me about your Hepexamendios. Oh. He is... It's kind of hard to explain. He is the, the, the god who crushed all the other gods and created his own city. And ultimately, he was defeated by the old goddesses and from his you, body sprang life you you serve a dead god well i wouldn't say i serve him um you pray to his dead god well i pray that is i pray for the life that springs from his body i really am more um interested in the the goddesses and the waters of the goddesses now. It sounds like your faith is malleable. 
That's good. Everyone's faith is malleable. Are you going to give us passage? We'll get there. He looks over at Ralph. I am Megara, and a giant spider walks up next to her, and she says, This is Willem. What is your name? Ralph. You're one who's been offered the power of hell, but you rejected it. Yeah. That tiger will have his day still, I think. If you can survive that long. Now you're beholden to another god. A god of the downtrodden, remnant races. Interesting, you've got a bit of heretic in you still. Mm, I've been called worse. And she looks at Musette. <laughs> what is your name? Musette? And where do you fa place your faith, Musette? Uh, uh, Pose in the beauty of art and music. We have that in the gulfs as well. What happens to you after you die? Nothing. My ancestors continue singing our songs. That's good. She looks over at Zoe and uh, and Tressa. Ladies, tell me your names. Uh, Tressa says, I'm Tressa Young, and she just looks at her uh, shifty-eyed. I'm Zoe Mason. I fear your delusional faith in a goddess long gone will be the death of you. Well, I fear you're mistaken because she's not long gone. Do you ever wonder if the power and the gifts you have were a manifestation of your blind faith and devotion? No. What if Isis were not real? What if the sky was purple? What if she were dead? What if, you what if were she dead? is not there to answer when you need her the most? That's never happened, and I don't think it ever will. But how do you know? How do you know it's not psychosomatic? How do you know the power is not with, was not in you the whole time? The fact that nobody else has it. Uh, at this point... At this point, Tressa comes up to you and, and uh, kind of stands in front of you and holds her, holds her glaive. He says, I think I've had about enough of this. And then, and, uh, and, uh, Magera says, ladies and gentlemen, you've come here looking for hell, but this place is the most pale substitute and its creators suffer every day for the insult to the gulfs. I need so strong heretics to move, to mold the powerful warriors for the gulfs. You'll receive the powers of hell itself. Those worthy heretics may lead me to the ninth circle where the way is barred for me from me returning to the gulfs. There you will fix the broken portal and follow me into the gulfs. I choose Ralph Sherdovir and Musette. Zoe and Tressa, you may follow us if you wish. You may go back up, up and leave if you want, but you cannot go into the ninth circle. I will not have you interfering with our, uh, with, with our return to hell. Do you understand? I understand you're going to hell. Exactly. I didn't and mean those of you that I've chosen are coming with me. I kind of 
feel like maybe we should have like a team huddle session real fast? No, I that's, think that's possible. Good. I'm good with that. Does she mind? I suppose I'll uh, I'll be over here, and she uh, she actually her her black leathery wings uh, come out from behind her back, and she flies off. I like your wings. <laughs> I didn't expect her to uh, give us some privacy. And and the spider uh, crawls off after her. Don't, Don't eat, eat that, that spider, spider Ralph. Ralph. Oh, it's it's huge. It's it's uh, like the size of a horse. That oh. thing is even, even more, more attractive, attractive to him. To him. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I see Ralph licking his lips. Um, Mind you, we didn't do. We didn't get breakfast. Yeah. So guys, what do you think? So the whole plan, the whole thing that we're, we're here for, I think, is to get to that gate. Do you think she's telling the truth? All I know is splitting up is never a good idea. I, I'm well, with you no, on no. that one. She said, she said you could come, 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 but but by the time, by the time we, we get, get to the, to the ninth, ninth level, level, it sounds, it sounds like, like she's trapped. trapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trapped. Yeah. At the At same time, I thought the point was to get down to the ninth level. Level. Do we even know yeah. if this person is telling the truth? I mean, right. That's that's my concern. But I mean, y you can still tag along. It's just uh, by the time we get to the ninth level, we might have to reevaluate our relationship with this demon. Um, because I mean, but if they're offering us some form of protection to get, get through these last few levels, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I think it's probably worth the chance. But what if Zoe goes and finds uh, uh, Jonathan while we're, and she makes headway there while we're on our way down south? And we wouldn't have the help from Zoe and Tressa. That's very true. We don't really know where the, the ma magician went to, right? I mean, we're kind right. of in a pickle. Yeah, we are. Um, mm -hmm. I'm willing to accept her protection, at least until we get to the ninth level. Um, if she does a move, I think we can all agree that we would gang up together and, and take care of it. Uh, okay. Is that okay with you guys? Is that okay with you, Zoe? Do, do you want to do that? Do you... I mean, if we it's, need to get Jonathan, I can... It's just your, your call. call. I'm sure I can sweet talk him. I'm a good cook. It sounds like you want to kick some butt. I do, but then again, we've already we're already down a player, so. But I agree. Trissa says we should I'm split. with I'm with Zoe. Okay. I'm I I, I kind of want to just get this over with and fight them here. Okay. I mean, she serves the gulfs, so. Really, I don't think we can trust her. Um, yeah, and and don't don't uh, don't take that as me, the DM, telling you what to do. Okay, that's that's what Tressa would say. <laughs> that's all. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no. I mean, those are valid points. She hasn't attacked us so far. She hasn't We've only done known any... her for five minutes. That's true. But she's the only person who hasn't come out swinging. Yeah, I mean, that's my point. She's the only person who hasn't come out swinging at us. She seems to. I don't know, man. I don't know. But... Hell is huge, so there might be some other political well, stuff going, going on in play right now. That's a do good. We... That's a good point. Do we all have to go? Well, it's the only direction. It's the only direction. Let's right, go. Let's cause... go. Yeah. I, I think mean, we let's... just need to keep going, keep going. as above, above, so below. So below you, know, you know, just push, push through. through. Yeah, let's move through this level with this demon Magira and see what happens. Um, and if she makes a move we don't like, then it's game on. Preston okay. says, "Don't, don't turn your back to her." Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, we won't. Okay, Magira, are you still there? Hello. Ah, she flies back over. Have you reached a decision? Um, we will walk with you for now. Okay. 
So, all right then, I will lead the way. All right, sounds good. We'll follow right behind you. Hope this is gonna work. So she, um, Rob, I'm trying to remember <laughs> where, where did we put the exit on this one? Top right. Okay, thank you. Megara's been in here so long she forgot where the exit is. Understandable. Okay, so we're following her. And uh, I'm keeping my hand on my sword for now. And the uh, the spider follows with her. Willem. I don't like that spider. I I examine my surroundings. Uh yeah, it's uh there's a creepy sort of a, a a creepy sort of hellish glow to all of these upside down crucifixes everywhere. And there's lot, giant spider webs on them. Okay, uh, that makes you sense. See you see uh, some the remains of dead bodies, uh, but nothing is moving other than uh, other than the group. So this level is the heresy level, right? So yeah. is this where the heretics are punished? I think so. Why did they? Why did she pick me, Ralph, and Musette, and not Zoe? Well, Does, I, I understand. Um, D does Cherdovira know the the levels of Dante's Inferno? Well, yeah, she talked about yeah. the heretics, right? We're, we're on the heresy we're level six. Yeah. yeah, I'm just I, right. Yes, the, I mean you guys know that as players, that right? Players. But does, right. would Cherdovira have read uh, Dante Alighieri? Well, she said that this was the place of heretics. Right, no. but I think that right. her question was why Zoe wasn't like selected right yeah. but, I but I think it's because, because she believes in the goddess, goddess Isis, Isis and, she and she follows the goddess, the goddess Isis. Isis right so I'm talking to you guys now I'm talking to you I'm saying um, I'm kind of whispering to you guys I'm trying to understand why she wouldn't select she told me that I had a malleable faith so she selected me I think that makes me a heretic um uh, that this place if punishes heretics, her. right? Yeah. You if don't I trust her. her. It's very simple, and you catch more flies with honey. Okay. Well, well, she's got her back to us, so let's keep moving. Okay. So you... I, uh, I wouldn't be really hung up on the term heretic. heretic. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, so, um, so Magira and Willem head down the steps. Okay. So we're going to level seven. Yeah. Okay, this was easy. This was easier than I thought for this one. Okay, spoke too soon. Jinx. She says, this is the level of violence. The creatures here, unfortunately, are mindless. Uh, I will protect the heretics as best I can as we make our way to the center. Okay, I see it. Okay, so if we're tra on our travels, our travels here, here, since Zoe, Zoe and Tressa, Tressa are not protected, I think that they should probably be somewhere in the middle. Good idea, yeah. Just to make sure that they're okay. And is there like a protection spell that we can give them? Hmm. What yeah, you see here is... Protection from good people. What what you see here as you um, when you when you come up out when you come down the steps uh, mm -hmm. the the whole room is lit up because there there's a, a circle of uh, it's a river of blood uh, and then another circle inside of that one and that's a river of fire. Okay. Is it uncomfortably hot? Uh, not right now. But as you step this, the closer you step, the warmer it gets. 
so we have to find a way to cross this river of blood, guys. Uh, what is uh, Magira doing? Well, I don't uh, think blood will hurt us. <laughs> how 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 uh, wide is this river of blood? It's a, it looks like it's about twelve. Yeah, 12 it's be, it's yeah, and it, it's some some places it's feet. as big as like eighteen feet. But uh, yeah, hmm. that's about. Okay, Dang. I do have, um, I do have, Tensor's floating disc. Do, do things, things float, float in blood? Uh, do you really want to get in there, Ralph? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> yeah, I think you know I can, uh, I can, I can, I can cast my Tensor's floating disc. And I can transport people across the river of blood. Um, let's see. Can I? How many times can I use this? Oh, okay. This is a, actually covers some spell slots. So if I do this for everybody, it's gonna use up my spell slots. Hang on. Yeah, can I, I have fly, which is you touch a willing creature, the target gains a flying speed of sixty feet for the duration. Okay. Ryan, can I cast a, can I cast a, a Tensor's floating disc, and use it to transport more than one person? Um, what does it say on the spell? I think that you could probably do one person at a time, and so it's going to depend on the carrying capacity of it, and like or like the how long the spell stays active. This says the spell creates counts. a circular horizontal plane of force, three feet in diameter, one inch thick, that floats three feet above the ground in an occupied place of your choice. The disc remains for the duration and can hold up to 500 pounds. If more weight is placed on it, the spell ends and everything on the disc falls to the ground. It is immobile while I am within 20 feet of it. If I move 20 feet away from it... Oh, I can't cast it and move it. Yeah, I think you, you can control it as long as it's within 20 feet of you. But if it gets gotcha. farther than 20 feet away, you can't control it anymore. It says it's one action, so that would mean I would have to spell it again. So no, I uh, it, it's one action to cast it. So okay. it would use up a whole turn in combat if you cast it in combat. But okay. it's only six seconds to cast it. And, but so how, what's the, what's the it, duration, it though? The duration? What's that? He doesn't control it. It follows him at 20 feet. I actually oh. was in another D and D game, and I had this argument with somebody oh. because, and they said they said you can't because they they were saying that they could ride on it, and I said no, you can't because it follows you. You know how could you ride on it if it's following you? And they so so they, hear me out, guys. If I cast it 20, uh, 20 feet ahead of me and I walk forward, it moves forward as well, right? Yeah, yeah. you said it holds up to five hundred pounds. So you'd uh, actually probably be able to hold, hold at least two people. people. But I so, have a lie, too, if we're able to split up. My understanding uh, of it up. is, and, and I, I lost the argument, but my understanding is that you, you control the disc. And that a person can ride on it, and you can have your friends ride on it. Okay, so let's see. One of you guys has flight, right? Who said? Okay. I can put both Ralph and Zoe on it and help them cross the river of blood. They would have to be one at a time because it's only three feet wide. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. So I'm going to cast it. Do you guys, sorry that I'm putting you guys ahead, but, uh, you know, it's not like I'm trying to put you in peril, but do you guys want me to help you cross the river of blood? Yeah. Okay. So the, so the, the wording of it is it, it, if it's more than 20 feet away, then it just automatically follows you and you can't control it anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, so but when you're within to... 20 feet, you can control its movement. So I'm going to risk moving within the bank of the River of Blood. And I'm going to examine my surroundings because they mentioned there were like creatures here in this plane. So um, what do I see around? Do I see any creatures? Make a perception check. Okay, we will do. Perception check. Okay, and I have 12 plus 4, 16. Okay, uh, yeah, actually with a 16, you, you see the, 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 the river is kind of, it's uh, pretty stagnant. Um, 
but there is a little bit of movement inside. Um, we, we the the blood in some places is more coagulated. There's there's uh, chunks of black in it, but you there is some movement uh, coming up from underneath, and it seems to have been triggered by people getting close to the river. Ah, oh, great! I should have known. Uh, you see, um, you see Megara fly up in the air and pull out her bow. Okay, looks like she's going to protect us. So I'm going to put both Ralph and Zoe on. T oh, yeah, I I'm going to put uh, Ralph on one of the tensor floating discs. I'm going to cast it. Okay, so I okay. used up another spell slot. And okay, I'm going so to who's, control. Okay, so who's getting on there first? Looks like uh, me. Ralph? Okay. I guess he doesn't mind if he falls into the blood. No, no. Okay. okay. All righty, I so. That. Okay, so I And am... and uh, the floating disc does it um it hovers 3 feet above the ground. Right. Just get my sickle that way. Yeah, get that thing ready, man. Happens. Well, it's not a sickle anymore. It's a it's a sword thing. Cool. So I, I very stable. I create a very stable disc. I, I try to move it across the river of blood with Ralph on it. Okay. Do I need to do any checks? <laughs> okay. So here we go. I'm on it. Uh. Oh, I see some, I see some movement there. Okay, so, uh, okay, show the beer. <laughs> I've, I've cast it. I, you know. Uh, I'm okay. So and Ralph is on the. It, Ralph, when you climb on the floating disc, it yeah. uh, rises up three feet off the ground. Oh man. I'm doing the magic hands. Okay, so you want to send him across the river? Yep. Okay, as you do, you see this uh, undead zombie-looking creature kind of work its way towards him. But since he's three feet off, off up off the surface of the of the river, it can't reach him. He's trying to grab at him, huh? Yeah. I have my moon sword. Okay, hold on, Ralph. Hold on. Okay, so Ralph uh, gets dropped off on the other side. Awesome. And the disc is within... It's right at 20 feet, so it sort of edges its way back towards you, and then it stops. It stops at, at the bank of the river? Yeah. Yeah, so just to, to where it's back in your control again. Okay, I look at Megara. She's holding her bow, so I'm yeah. going to guess she's going to help us, right? She said she would protect the heretics. Ah, crap. So with Zoe, I guess... The, the undead is not going to be able to touch her. Zoe, you want to cross the river? The zombie uh, climbs up out of the river oh. and attacks you. Great. So I guess at this point, everybody roll initiative. Okay, roll initiative. Okay. And I'm going to have to adjust this a little bit. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Three plus three equals six. Ralph got a 13. 18. Oh, plus four, 20. I get 18. Okay, hey, that's pretty good. And, um, I also have a spell for uh, protection against the undead for one person. Oh. No. I have to touch them. So I guess I have to touch Tressa since we're both not being protected. Oh, okay. Yes, Ryan. Uh, and and Chertovir, what did you roll for initiative? On mute. I'm sorry about that. I ha I rolled a three plus three equals six. Okay. I thought I, I didn't realize I got muted. Sorry. 
Uh, and then Musette and Ralph. Okay, so I rolled a uh, 16 plus 4, 20. And and Ralph, what did you roll? Oh, I rolled an um, 11 plus uh, 13. Uh, 11 plus 2, so 13. Okay, thank you. Willem is okay. first, actually. I'm playing and the rest of the game is... with this on. Those are cool. <laughs> He is has been ordered to protect the heretic, so he's gonna run down here and attack this zombie. Cool. He's gonna bite it. I hate wow, spiders. I'm sure that probably is. And that is zombie number two. I hate spiders. Spider totally is. Okay. So he takes four damage. Yeah, bite that guy. Uh, he does not get poisoned, though, because he's a zombie. Okay, and now it's Musette's turn. And, uh, and Zoe will be next after Musette. Nine. Nine to hit? Yeah. Uh, with what plus, is this? A gu plus the gun? Plus 14. Yes, physical. Yeah, that hits. Okay. This is two, three, six, plus three. Eight. Ten total. Okay. Yeah, you uh, you blow his arm off, but he's still uh, he's still up. It just kind of looks at you with uh, vacant dead eyes. It doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to be registering pain or anything. And uh, Zoe's turn. Shoot for the head. Okay, I am going. I'm going to do the protection from evil and good. I'm going to touch Tressa because that protects from the undead. Or paladin. Okay. All right. And... I don't know if it lets me put notes on here. I'll put it in my other notes. Okay. Okay, I clicked cast and then I click spell slot. And I think that gives enemies disadvantage on attacking her. Like the 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 types of the, the fiends and undead and stuff. Yeah, you you uh, you cast the spell and and uh, a glow goes over Tressa and she is now protected from from fiends and undead. Okay. Uh, and next up is uh, Rob. Can I see the the harpies? Ugh. Ah. Ralph is just over there by himself. Sent the wrong guy over. They're in the they're in the tree. Not necessarily. I mean your first line of defense, Ralph. So they fly oh. 
Okay, so. Oh, um, let's see here. There we go. It flies over and lands next to uh, Magera, and she says, "Stand down." And this one flies over and lands next to Ralph because that other one didn't see him but this one does I ask friends of yours well it's not your turn yet okay and uh, it, so it's attacking Ralph bastards <laughs> hold on Ralph yes You're welcome. what's he hit me Okay, uh, 14 to hit. Oh, my armor class is 15. Yeah, so that misses. <laughs> Thanks, Flarp. <laughs> okay. Okay, and it can, it can make two attacks, so it's going to try again. Okay. Um, do I have a... And that misses. So it, it swung two claws at you, and you kind of ducked out of the way. I have a reaction I'd like to do. Uh, if it's hellish rebuke, that only works if you get hit. Oh, that's. <laughs> Do I have an opportunity? Nobody didn't hit you. Opportunity attack. No. Okay. Well. Damn it. Okay. Well, I'm glad I didn't get hit. Uh, it, it's um. Oh, wait, we did that. Okay. There we go. Ralph, it's your turn anyway. So now you can do something if you want. There's a wall that. of fire uh, next to you, and it's Can it's I, hot, but it's not uh, doing damage. And, uh, of, and there's a harpy next to you dog. swiping at you. Can I do the arms of Hadar? Yeah. Uh, each creature in the area must make a strength saving throw. On a failed save, a target takes 2d6 necrotic nec Okay, damage. So, so, so what's the saving throw? What's this? The what saved is what's the number that she has to make? Uh, thirteen. Okay. She got an eleven, so she failed. So she got hit by it. Yay! So roll so the. Let's... Go ahead and roll the damage. Okay. Two. Five. So that's uh, eight. Okay. Um, eight damage. All right. So the arm grabs, uh, whips at her and hits her for eight damage. Okay. Huh. And uh, next up is Tressa's turn. And she's going to run up here and attack the zombie. And she missed. And I think she might get us. Did she get a second attack? I don't. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. She, she just missed. Okay. And uh, next is. Uh, zombie one, Rob, can you make him visible? There we go. And he can go 20 feet. Okay. And zombie two. It's kind of surrounded here. Let's see, the spider was somewhere where it could attack. I guess like a that. He's got a spider, he's got Chirdovir, and he's got Tressa. So he's going to attack Tressa. Me too. And is Musette there? Oh, yeah, right. He could also, so that's four he could attack, he could choose from. 
One, two, three. So he's actually attacking the spider, Willem. Slam attack, he just slams it with his fists. 11 probably doesn't hit. Nope, yeah, he missed. Okay. And then zombie three. Oh, there he is, okay. When he, he's also going to attack Willem. He missed. And zombie four, is he like somewhere around the circle? Do you know where a zombie four is? Okay, so they got the numbers next to them, right? Yeah. Okay. But they're all hidden in the... D oh, there he is. Okay. They're hidden in the DM layer. Since I'm controlling the one that the that the audience sees, I can't see them either until they until Rob brings them back out. He was munching yeah. on a, a big blood clot. Yeah, <laughs> gross. <laughs> okay. There's zombie four. And zombie five. This is taking a turn. Literally. Mm. Okay, there we go. Awesome, yeah, that helps. I'm just going to start moving them closer. 20 feet. That's all the way through 7. Okay, you're moving uh, number nine there. Nine zombies? Yeah. Did, did you already move ten? I can do that. No, not yet. Okay, there we go. All right, that's it. Ten zombies total. We are outnumbered. Okay, but we defeated all the skeletons last time. I feel like there were like a million skeletons. And minotaur skeletons. Yeah. yeah. The giant, giant skeletons. skeletons. And uh, at this point, um, Megara flies up in the air and says, I said, stand down! And she flies over here and shoots into the, uh, the harpy that's attacking Ralph. Thanks. still hits. I rolled really badly, but they, it still hit anyway. It takes 16 damage. And... Does Tressa have like a I told you so smirk on her face? She didn't make it that, that this, far, this far. far. Previously. 
Yeah. Yeah, she she hasn't she hasn't been here before. She doesn't need to be smirking. I know, it's just because <laughs> I thought she didn't trust the uh, Megara either. So But Megara is helping right now. Yeah, yeah. But she's helping Ralph because he's a hero. Yeah. So whoa, uh, whoa. Yeah, so <laughs> Sorry, yeah, so she, uh, I'm just thinking, I was just seeing if, if uh, they're immune to poison and they're not, so they're also going to take all of her poison damage. Dark carnival heresy in the house. Oh, shoot, it makes three attacks. Okay, so another. Give us the deets. 26. 26 damage from arrows. Who's shooting arrows? The zombies? Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, Magira. Okay. Magira. And it's got to be a neat bow. Oh, and then they, then then she takes for each one of those 3d8 poison damage. She just died. Yeah. She only had four left, and she got hit by three poison arrows, so. Oh, yeah, the heartbeat again. Okay, I gotta yeah. show this, because this is super cute. Hang on. I don't know. What am I looking at? Yeah. Right there. <laughs> That's what I got to deal with. And uh, now it's Chertovir's turn. So you have this floating disc you're concentrating on, and, and uh, you got Ralph across. Um, do you want to let go of concentration and and drop the disc, or are you going to keep doing it, or are you going to do something different? Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna abandon the the disc. And okay, uh, okay so. I have a zombie right in front of me, right? Yeah. Okay. Can I use my sword and attack him with my sword? Let's go ahead yeah. and roll for hit. Um, let's see. Okay. Let me roll for that. Um, okay, silken sword. Let's uh, hit, and I get a 20 to hit. Yeah, that definitely hits. Okay. So roll awesome. your damage. My damage is 1d4 plus 4 slashing. You can click on that too if you want to. Okay. Eight. Uh, eight. Yes. Right. Eight damage on the zombie. And that like, uh, you you sliced his head in half and he falls hey! over and sinks awesome. back down into the river. Always go for the brain. I go like Magira. I thought you told your creatures to stand down. He said, I told you the, these are mindless and that I would protect the heretics. Gotcha. Okay, so that one's dead. Um, All right. So th- this, uh, let's see here. Another creature that looks like a, looks kind of undead but a little more de- fiendish crawls out of the lake of fire and starts heading towards Ralph ah <laughs> we're so screwed and it, it attacks do these things always attack with disadvantage uh, they only only if they're attacking Tressa because she has the spell, you know, oh. the protection from good and evil. Even though I have the that cloak on. Oh my god! I totally forgot about your cloak. Cloak of displacement. Th- yeah, thank you for reminding me about that. Yes, they do attack with disadvantage. So, um, right, because it it's uh, it it uh, sort of makes you so you look like. You're in two places at once, so it's yeah. hard to find. It's hard to hit you. Yeah. Okay. 
until he tries to punch you. Oh my god, that was a I, I rolled an eighteen and a twenty. So Wow. <laughs> so they actually do hit you. Um, oh man. So it, it punches you. And you take uh four da or one damage, sorry. Well now I'm gonna do Hellish Rebuke. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh go ahead. Okay, hold on. Hellish Rebuke it says is Oh so one thing just to keep in mind uh, Hellish Rebuke is does fire, right? Yeah. And this guy just crawled out of a lake of fire. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> Damn. Well, then I'm just going to bite him. Okay. He's hungry jaws on him. Uh, oh, is that a reaction? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, you you got a bunch of reactions. Okay, yeah. Uh, is that a roll to hit? Once per short rest, bonus action, you can make a bite attack. If it hits, oh. you gain two temporary hit points. So that's not a reaction; it's a bonus action. So oh, it's on your turn. On your action. turn. Yeah. Oh, on my turn. Well, then I don't have any other reactions. This other one also comes up out of the fire and attacks Ralph mm -hmm. with disadvantage. So that is a miss. Okay. And they can move 15 feet. So Rob, can you like uh, show all of them? Yeah, thanks. I have a opportunity attack. Right, yeah. So that's like if if they move out of your out of combat with you, then you can attack them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well. I think I moved all of them. Oh wait, maybe not number four there. Okay. Yep, that's uh, that's all of them. Their initiative is zero. Okay, uh, giant spider's turn. It is going to attack this zombie over here by that's coming up out of the river. Well, actually, it doesn't, uh, because the zo that zombie hasn't attacked anybody yet. So the zombie is just going to uh, go over towards Musette and hold action and attack anything that comes after Musette. And next is Musette's turn, and then Zoe will be after Okay, so back to flying, <laughs> now that that's been figured out. Oh, yeah. I can fly myself as well, right? Yep. Yeah, you okay. can fly yourself and I think a number of other people. Uh, yep. It says if you do fourth level or higher, you can target one additional creature for each slot above the third. Oh. Um, oh, I see. Okay. But I can't see which... Oh, I'm right here. Level four. So it looks like I can just bring one other person with me. Okay. Who, and that who are you going to... Who, who are you going to bring? I'm going to bring Tressa. Okay. And, and where are you flying to? We are going to fly, fly straight over uh, to flank Ralph but facing Zombie 2. Okay. Well, Zombie 2 is dead. There's also, um, I well, guess the, these are, the, these things, uh, these things coming out of the fire are more like uh, demons. They're just oh, okay. kind of these primordial, you know, looking things. Oh. They're not, they're not formed. 
there's a little. But they look kind of like a little bit like zombies arms. and a little bit like devils. Oh, I see. He has like tentacle arms. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go on either side of Ralph, facing two. Okay. Um, and that's two charges, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, like this, yeah. or or do you want to do like that? Uh, no, let's stay close to Ralph because he's got another dude close to him. Okay. So right here. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um. So your action was casting that spell, right? So you have. You still have bonus actions if you want to do that. If you have anything in bonus actions that okay. would help. I think you can inspire people with your bonus actions. You can play your lyre, do a song to give someone inspiration. I like it dirty. And then I also have healing word, misty step. And two weapon fighting? Yeah, that's not. If you have, that's only if you have a weapon in each hand already. Oh, okay. You can, yeah, if you attack with one weapon, you can also attack with the other as a bonus action. Okay. Uh, I am going to save the Bardic infor inspiration for later. Okay. Because Ralph and Tressa have some sort of protection already on them. Right. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Well, I think it's anyone that you can see within, right? So I think that you don't you don't have to do the people that are right next to you, since you're playing a song within sixty feet. Yeah. Right. So you could also inspire Magara <laughs> or uh, Cherdovir or Zoe. Yeah. Yeah, let's go ahead and send that over to Zoe then. Okay, so you're going to inspire Zoe? Yep. And then it says she gains an inspiration die 1d6. Yeah, so if she makes an attack roll or like a spell attack roll, I think, or a, um, or a saving throw, she can add another d6 to the 20-sided die roll. All right, um, and now it's Zoe's turn. We can't, we can't hear you. All right, only have one hand. Um, let's see. All right, what I wanted to do was um, now my sacred flame uh, spell. It says when a creature that you see within range, and the range is 60 feet. Now, where I am, Willem is in between me and like every critter on that screen. Is that gonna be an issue? Or does it have to be like right in front of me or? To do sacred flame? Yeah, it says it, it flame-like radiance descends on a creature that you can see within range. Yeah, so the range might be like 20 feet or 60 feet what is it say for the... it says oh, 60 okay. I, I just yeah, didn't it... know since he's like right in front of me is that gonna hurt him i don't want to hurt him oh i got you yeah you you might want to sidestep you know to to do that okay all right what i will do then is let's move me over two steps and then i want to try to get this I guess that's number three. That's yeah. In okay. Front of me. All right. So, go ahead and do sacred flame. Get off there. Okay. So that was eight okay. to hit. Yeah. He, d amazingly, that actually still hits. <laughs> The zombies have terrible armor class. Okay. All right. So yeah, um, roll your damage. Uh, 
Where do you go? Okay. And then it, and then I have to roll a sided die. So. I think you just did the damage out. already. Right. Was oh, okay. Six, six damage. Seven. It says sacred flame damage seven. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, you you uh, put a big scorch on him. Yay! Burn, right. baby, burn. <laughs> and this harpy over here kind of looks over at Megara, and sees that she's not looking. And it's then it looks over at Chernovir and Zoe, and it's gonna decide which one it wants to attack. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. So it's going to attack Chernovir. All right. Uh, 13 to hit. I think that misses, right? I have 13 armor class. Or wait. Yeah, there was 13. So that And hits. I have mage armor. And I have mage armor. So mage armor changes your armor class to like Sorry. 14, right? Uh, let me check that. Mage armor says... Target's base AC becomes 13 plus its dexterity modifier, and my dexterity modifier is plus three. So oh, that means so my armor class is 16. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so, yeah, he missed. She missed. Okay. And she's going to try again with the club. Also missed. Yeah. Okay. And now it's Ralph's turn. And then Tressa ah. will be after Ralph. I would like to use Eldritch Blast. This okay. guy right in front of me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Let me just double check my die. It, I don't see the number on that one. Rob, do you know which one that is? So 1d10. Uh, you have to roll the hit first. Oh. It. 18. Okay, yeah, that hits. Number one. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the guy I'm aiming at. Yeah. Yeah, it's one. Okay, yeah, I see. The one was hidden under the dead body. Okay. Um, I'll roll the roll the damage. Me. So, um, six. Okay. Six plus. Um, yeah, you do a pretty massive amount of damage to it. And it's, uh, it's looking at you and it's pretty mad. Oh, okay. man. <laughs> All right. And now it's Tressa's turn. And she, where did she go? Oh, yeah, she flew over here. So she's going to attack this uh, this other one that's behind Ralph. With her glaive. That definitely hits. And she did seven damage to number two. Okay. And who's next after her? Oh, the zombies again. All right. So number three. I'm going to see if it attacks Zoe or Chernobyl. It's attacking Zoe. With it, it, it puts his fists together and, uh, and uh, clubs down at you. Four. That's, uh, 14 to hit. I think your armor class is higher than that, right? Uh, 
Armor class is 14 for me. Oh, okay. So that hits. So you take six damage from getting bludgeoned by the zombie. And Willem, Willem doesn't do anything. Uh, he was holding his action to protect uh, to protect Tressa, but she's gone. Now, see, this is why I don't like spiders. Or, no, it wasn't Tressa. She was protecting Musette. Sorry, he was. Right, yeah. right. Okay. How does Willem look? Uh, it's a it's like kind of a big a, a big furry spider, like the size of a horse. Okay. Kind of I like imagine a he looks like Lucas the spider. Do, do the eyes He's glow? Super cute. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, the, the eyes do have sort of a hellish glow to them. Okay. All right. Um, Is it like Aragog from Harry Potter? I don't remember Aragog. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. He lost or bust. Okay, and zombies. I got Catalina, if I tag us on Facebook for the game, do you want me to tag your performer page? Whatever is best. Okay. Thank you. There's one I missed. Okay. okay. That's all the zombies. And uh, Megara. Let's see if she's got a good perception. Yeah, she didn't notice the uh, the harpy attacking Chertovir. So she's going to start, she's going to continue to protect Ralph. So she will fly down and land here in between. And do two sword attacks against this thing. Well, she probably doesn't need to. Okay. Actually, she can make three attacks. Yeah, she all three attacks hit, but she just kills it. Well, actually, she'll do. Um, she'll just use one attack on him. She's gonna move over to this other zombie and attack it also. So that's uh. Zombie number 10. That's a lot of zombies. Yeah. So 10 damage to him. And another sword attack. Five. Okay. All right. Um, next is Chertovir. All right. 
So let me go ahead and uh, attack. Oof, that's a really ugly monster there. Okay, which one's the closest to me? I see zombie number, th uh, I see a harpy behind me. Yep, and zombie number three. Okay. Are they both attacking me right now? Uh, yeah, I, or no, the, the zombie attacked uh, Zoe. Okay, so I would like to cast, let's see. Um, hmm, what do I want to do here? I will cast uh, Booming Blade. It's a cantrip, so I will, I cast Booming Blade. Okay. Let me, uh, so. Does that, does that take one action or does that, uh, do you get It says to one action. Also? Yep, one action. And what happens in the one action? So I brandish the weapon, I brandish my ribbon sword and I make a melee attack. Uh, on a hit, the target suffers the weapon's attack normal effects and then becomes sheathed in booming energy until the start of, the, of my next turn. If they move five feet or more before then, the target takes 1d8 thunder damage and the spell ends. Okay. So, uh, I guess I got a roll to hit my cantrip? Yeah. It's a roll to hit with your sword. Okay, roll to hit with my sword. Against the harpy, right? You got it. Yep. I have ro oh, Come on, man. I rolled a nine. Uh, let me see. I think that might miss. Two plus seven. Yeah, yeah, that missed. Ugh. Okay. That's a bummer. And um, next is the uh, the demons in the in the fire. And they can move fifteen feet. This one's going to attack Musette. Uh, 13, does a 13 hit? Musette? It's 17, is my armor so class. Missed. Okay, so missed. And... Okay, that's their turns. And uh, it's Willem's turn. So Willem saw the harpy was attacking one of the heretics, right? So it is going to Go up here and attack. So plus hit. 16. That hits. Oh, wait, it's not plus 3 hit. I was thinking it's one hit. Plus 5 hit. Still hits. Mm -hmm. Ten damage from the bite, and it has to make a Constitution saving throw, or it gets poisoned. So the harpies can get poisoned. Yeah, they can. Gotcha. I think yeah, it's poisoned. It also takes another 2d8 of poison damage. So five, five more poison damage. Awesome. Okay. 
Uh, Musette is next. I have a quick question, question about um, what's her name? Maj Maj Majir? Yeah. If I make a wind wall, I need to make sure to go around her, correct? Otherwise, it will injure her. Uh, right, yeah. Okay. So I'd like to cast a wind wall. Okay. Sorry, I wasn't sure if that was coming through or not. Uh, a wind wall starting from, um, okay, if you're looking at Ma Majira, mm -hmm. uh, just above her. Oh, okay. And then around getting, I guess that's a zombie, number 10. Yeah. And then around um, following the ring of whatever this is, fire or Oh, lava. to hit as many of those as you can? Right, yeah. And then I also want it to affect zombie or demons two and three. Two and three. Okay. Two and three. So it's basically like a little like mini horseshoe. It's not a very good horseshoe, but. Oh, okay. So it's going to kind of go around to the bottom, like and hit 10 yeah. and then zombie 10 and zombie yeah, two and three. Yeah, hit 10. Yeah. How long is the wind wall? What's the length of it? Um, you can make the wall up to 50 feet long, 15 okay. feet high, one foot thick. And then when the wall appears, each creature within its area must make a strength saving throw. Okay. A creature makes 3d8 bludgeoning damage on a failed save, or half as much on a successful one. Okay. So that would be from Zombie 10 to Demon 10, to Demon 3, to Demon 2, right? To Demon 2, yep. That's exactly it. That's about, it looks like 30 feet to me. So I think you could go 10, you could go 20 more feet. I can, but I don't think there's anyone else really in that. Uh, I don't think I can hit Demon 4, right? Yeah, right, not in 2 he's, at the he's same just, time. Yeah, yeah, no, he's just outside of the, the extra feet. I think that that's yeah. fine. Four, three demons, one zombie. Or you said 50 feet? It's 50 I feet think, total, yeah. I think if it made more of like an M shape, it could hit demon four, right? If it goes 10, 10, uh, three, one, two, and then four. Three, four, five. I guess, yeah. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, 40, that would be 45 feet. Oh, okay. Let's do it that way. Thank you. All right. Rob, are you able to draw the wind wall like that? Sorry, it's kind of wonky. <laughs> it usually cool. does the job, so. Yeah. Yeah, wonky is really All right. Cool. Oh. Yay! Okay. I love these wall spells. And then, yeah, okay, so it's a cre uh, they have to make a strength saving throw, yeah. and then they take a 3d8 bludgeoning on a okay. failed or half on a successful. Okay, I'm going to do all of the, there. Uh, I'll do the zombie last, and I'll do all of the, the demons first. Sorry, yeah. Uh, okay, so the demons have to make a strength saving throw. What do they, what do they need to get? Um, a creature takes 3d8 bludgeoning damage on a failed save, or half as much on a okay. successful and what, what's one. The, oh, attack what's save, the... 13. Okay, 13 on yeah. strength. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, two passes and two fails. So they take half damage on on fail. On the pass, uh, they take on the pass. Three d eight on okay. the failed, and half of a three d eight on a pass. Okay. Can you roll the damage then? Okay. Okay. So three d eight is six. Eight is fourteen. Eighteen total. Okay. Wow. Uh, 
I'm going to say the last two in the wall are the ones that were able to kind of get out of the way a little bit because they saw it coming. So, um, number 10 takes 18 damage. He dies. Uh, number three takes 18 damage. And he dies. And then number four takes nine damage. And then number two takes nine damage and he dies because he was already hurt. Okay, so you send demons flying everywhere, and I gotta do the zombie now. Zombie 10. Actually, even it doesn't matter if he passes or fails, because he doesn't, he only has seven hit points left. So he died also. Yeah. Yeah, you oh. just took out a whole bunch of guys. Way to go. Now do that again. <laughs> And the wind wall stays up there, I think, as long as you keep concentration on it, right? Uh, yeah, it's a concentration. Yeah, it's a concentration. Hold up, up to, one, up to minute. one minute. Who else died? Uh, the zombie okay. 10. And now it's Zoe's turn. <laughs> okay, so since number three is right there in front of me, I'm going to and see if I can get him out of the way here. Okay. So, let me see. How many... Let's see. Does he, does he have any damage to him already? Uh, oh, three? I think <laughs> yeah. he does. Let me take a look here. I think he does, too. I just can't remember. Yeah, he, he, he did get hurt. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and use that magic spear that I had. The plus three one. Oh, okay. You know, stabby, stabby, cut, cut. Yeah, roll to hit. Uh, eight. Uh, that actually uh, still ten. hits because he's a zombie. Woohoo! Yeah. Okay, so damage. Come on, damage. Eight also. Okay, all right. Yep, you stab him right through the arm. And it looks at you. All right. And who's next? Looks like that oh. wall cleaned all the enemies out. A lot of them. Yeah. I was just grabbing a snack. Sorry, guys. Okay. And, um, yeah, uh, all of them died except for one. All of them that got hit. It is the harpy's turn. Yeah, she's and gonna attack it's... me, right? Yeah, it is. Vile demon. And I, it probably missed. Let's see here. Yeah, it got it. Rolled an eight to claw at you. Okay. And it's swinging at you with a club, uh, nineteen. So that would hit. Uh, so you um, take, you get bonked on the on the shoulder with the club, and you take two damage. Horny bonk, two damage. I am taking that now. Okay. okay. And then it's Ralph's turn. Okay. Ralph's turn. Ralph's turn. Well, everybody will be next after Ralph. Everybody's dying around me. I'm gonna eat on camera. Okay, well. Uh, oh, I'm at the wrong Oh yeah, one. there's a there's a Cherdovir behind your head. That's pretty cool. Okay, so there's this guy that. over here in the. We should do uh -huh. that with everybody. That's an awesome idea. Okay, right. that'd be easy to do. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Well, there's that guy over there at number four. I can't reach. So I'm gonna come up here to this, uh, and I'm gonna aim at this one. 
at zombie number one. Well, and, number four, uh, gonna... you you can reach just about everybody with with like your spells or your gun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Four seems more of of a uh, <clears throat> threat. So I'm just gonna elders blast him. Okay. okay. Uh, roll to hit. Eleven. Uh, that hits. Sweet. Oh, wait, that would be no. It, yeah, that still hits. Okay, got it. It hits. Then, okay, uh, roll, roll your damage. Hold on, let me see what my... Uh, I don't remember off the top of my head. It is the 10. Yeah. 1D, 10 plus 3. Okay. So, 8. Plus, well, no, 5 plus 3, so 8. 8? Eight. Eight. Okay, yeah. You. Um, so while it was getting up and recovering from the wind wall... You blasted it, and it uh, its head explodes, and it falls back down. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's my so, boy. So demon yeah, number four well. is dead. Show Who said kill? She's the one that fucked all these guys up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Tressa's turn. And she is going to healer with armor. That's a paladin. <laughs> oh, so so demon four is dead. Okay, so where what can she do? She I thought demon use... four was. Oh, he he killed demon four, not zombie four. Right. Oh, did you put across an X through zombie four? I don't even see where that one is. Okay, yeah, he 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 killed demon four. That's in the wind wall. Yep, there we go. And so she's looking for a, a target. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. She sees this zombie right here. And she is going to use a, a smite, a wrathful smite, which she only has to do if she hits. Well, I mean, she casts it, but then it only works. It only goes on a hit. So, okay. So, attack. Okay, that definitely hits. So she and she does uh, eleven damage plus her smite damage is another d6. So she does sixteen damage to that guy. She just wants to kill stuff. <laughs> and that is zombie. What is he, nine, I think? I think he's zombie nine. Okay. I'm gonna double check to see if she does extra damage to undead. I don't think so. Yeah, no, she's good. Um, all right. It is, uh, let's see. The zombies turns. This episode is sponsored by Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination. Don Bertram's Celebrate Imagination shop is dedicated to benefiting the arts and medicine program at Texas Children's Cancer Center. Up to 50% of his proceeds will support the program where artist Don Bertram's volunteers monthly. Don Bertram is a longtime friend of Clive and celebrates and continues to be inspired by his art. He uses that inspiration to help kids through the Texas Children's Cancer Center, and we couldn't be more thrilled to continue to work with him. 
There's a news feature video that shows Don working with the kids at Texas Children's Cancer Center and his artwork. Click the side banner at www.cliveparkercast.com to find links to the video and his Etsy shop where you can buy his prints, books, and support this wonderful program. Check out his most recent shared painting, Sky Egg, homage to Barker, from his Etsy shop. If you like the character artwork for Jericho Squad, check out the art of Asya Yordanova. Shayla Sackinger of Bird Ninja Art. If you like the intro theme, check out music by composer Ben Warren, who's a good friend of the Clive Barker podcast. In-game music provided by Tabletop Audio. Joe and Catalina come from Little Spark Films, who recently helped with Joe Bob Briggs's The Last Drive-In on Shudder. Check out Catalina Carita's Barker and Briefs, where she reads Clive Barker books. She's currently reading Clive Barker's A to Z of Horror, which BarkerCast is also revisiting with our audio commentaries. These make great companion pieces together. And finally, if you want to support us at the BarkerCast, a great way to do that and show us off is the BarkerCast Tee Public Store. We've got a Jericho Squad crew shirt. We've got uh, Cenobium. We've got uh, Marcus's pinhead design. There's all kinds of great designs, and they're, and they're not just t-shirts either. So please go check it out. Uh, get something and support us. Thanks. I was recently asked to help moderate the new Facebook group, Clive Barker Book Club. If you like discussion of Clive's books, you should check it out. All right, well, we're back, and it's the zombies' turn, so they're going to all start moving. This one is going to attack Patressa. Patressa, watch out! Ooh. That looked painful. That missed. And then this one is going to attack Zoe. O 11. I think that misses. <clears throat> and then the rest of them are going to move. They can go 20 feet. This one. It's going over here to attack Chernovir. Oh no! Guard yourself for truth. And that is a uh, 18 to hit. Oh Jesus! I have uh, currently uh, 13 armor class plus th three. 16. Yeah. So 16, so I got hit. You How took, bad am uh, I? Three, three bludgeoning damage as he bonks you with his fists. People keep bonking me. Yeah. Okay. They're not very sophisticated fighters. <laughs> Bonk. <laughs> yeah. Drag you back to the cave. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, Magera flies up in the air and she's going to start shooting things with arrows because she's seeing, like, uh, her heretics are being attacked uh, from different different sides. So she's going to hit the harpy with one. Or she's going to try, anyway. And that hits. 
with her this is with her bow. So one D eight plus three. So she does nine damage, nine piercing damage to the harpy. And then we gotta deal with the poison. Oh, and then plus three D eight poison. Twenty damage. That's just from one arrow. Jeez. So that harpy is hurt badly. Um, she's gonna fire another arrow at. Well, nobody's attacking Ralph anymore. Saved she's him. not gonna. She's not gonna protect Tressa. Yeah, she's just gonna, gonna fire another arrow into the harpy. That hits. So wow. Yeah, it's dead. And she has one more attack, but she doesn't really... Yeah, she'll shoot the zombie that's attacking Zoe because it's also... Well, no, she'll shoot zombie number one because it's attacking uh, Chiruvir. <clears throat> the poison damage isn't going to work. Oh, she got a two plus eight, so that even though she rolled a two, she's still hit. So five damage to zombie number one. Okay. Okay. And that's the end of Magira's turn, and now it's Chirdovir's turn. Okay, a so... zombie clobbering you uh, on your left. And another turn. one fighting Zoe behind. Hmm. Okay, well, let me see. I think I'm going to prioritize... The one attacking me right now. Sorry, Zoe. Um, I'm trying to turn my character. I can't seem to turn him. Oh, doesn't matter. Um, yes. So I will slice him with my sword. Let me hit. Let me roll for hit. And I roll a. Come on, baby. Sixteen. That hits. Yep. Nine plus seven. And now let me roll for hit damage. I've. Roll the 12. 12 points. Wow. Okay. 12 points to zombie one. Go like, go back yeah. to hell. You he, he sliced his leg off and he falls over on the ground. It's just better but flesh he's still, wound. He, he, he's still crawling towards you. Oh my god. I gotta go oh, for the brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I kneecapped him. All right. Um, and after I scream out, these things are still coming. Okay, so this demon uh, <laughs> is going to attack Tressa. Oh, she has protection from evil and good on her, right? Yes. Okay, so she is getting attacked. He's attacking with disadvantage. So that's a miss. And then this one is going to go up here. Here. And I think that's all of them. Yep. Okay, <laughs> now let's see. Uh, whoa, why is the giant spider hurt? I don't remember him getting attacked. 
Mm -hmm. Must have put somebody else's damage on him. He's got 20, uh, 22 damage on him. That's weird. I only got hit for two and then three points. <laughs> uh, I don't know where that came from. Okay, so anyway, he is going to wander over and attack this zombie that's attacking Chertovir. Thanks, Spider Bro. Oh, natural one. I guess I gotta go to the chart. See what happened to him. Ninety five. <laughs> so he accidentally bit into his own leg and he did damage to himself I guess that was foreshadowing so I imagine he's immune to his own poison but he's going to take the piercing damage he took 5 damage alright Musette's turn and then Zoe will be after Musette. Okay, so I'm running pretty low on magic, but uh, I'm gonna do, I guess, one more decent spell uh, to help out Tressa here. And I want to cast Cloud of Daggers. Oh, okay. Okay, but I wanna cast it, like there's the, uh, let's see, these two demons, eight and nine, and then zombie, I don't know, I can't really see his number, I guess nine. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of their quadrant. So you can see they're like almost in a quadrant of four. You have one yeah. empty space. I'd like to cast it right in the center there, so that way it can affect everyone. Oh, in between all th the three? Yep. And it says so you fill the... Uh, and it's a five my foot range, cube, right? yeah, it's a five foot cube, and my range is 60 feet, so it should be within range. Yeah, oh, it's definitely within range. Okay, you can see through the wind wall, I think, right? Uh, yeah, it's a concentration, as and the wind wall was a concentration, so the wind wall's gotta fall. Oh, okay, because I'm gonna switch my concentration <laughs> to, the, to the daggers. So, Rob, I think. We've always kind of done this like it's a it goes into an occupied space, but if it's technically in between the spaces, then would it be able to hit all of those guys? I guess it's up to you depending on how close together they're standing because they're anywhere within a five foot. Yeah, field. and they're they're all crowding together to to come after Tressa, so I think it would work. If I we have would to... put it on the on the little cross hatch there between the those four spaces. I say if I has to focus on one person, then I guess Demon Nine would yeah. uh, if that's easier. No, well, I I it makes sense. I mean, honestly, I think it doesn't say you have to target one creature. It says it's a five foot area. Yeah, it just says a five foot cube. Yeah, so I I say yeah. So we'll oh yeah, put it's it on centered that. on a point you choose within range. Yeah, right. So you're centering it on the, the, the cross between the four cubes there, or yeah. the four squares where those three guys are. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and says, what's the... They don't take have any saves. They just... No. Oh, yeah, that's it. They just uh, take the damage. 4 slashing damage. Yeah, so go ahead and roll that, and then I'll, I'll, I'll give it to them. Okay, two, two is four... Five and four is nine total. Okay, so nine damage to zombie. Is he zombie nine? 
I opened it. Yeah. So he died. And then uh, <laughs> Demon 8 and 9. They take 9 damage. And they, and if they don't if they don't get out of there on their next turn they're going to take it again. Or no, they take it while they're trying to leave also. Uh, it says when it enters the spell's area for the first time on a tor turn, or it starts its turn there. So yeah, if they don't get out, they're going to have to yeah. take it again. Okay, so technically they're taking this damage when their turn starts. But yeah. I'll, I did it already, so we'll just remember that. Okay. And then they can try to get out on their turn. You said you're really giving it to them. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're our okay, tank. Okay, Zoe's turn. Okay, I've about had it with this zombie in front of me, so I'm doing Guiding Bolt. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, wow. <clears throat> 20. That and totally hits. Effect. 14. He's dead. You, your, dead. your Guiding Bolt kind of hit him and just blew him into pieces. So zombie three is down. And that's the end of uh, Zoe's turn. And the harpies are dead. And now it's Ralph's turn. Oh. Like this guy. Yeah, he, okay. So zombie three is dead? Uh, yes. Okay. Even five. Even five. Even five. And, okay. Uh, so... Sorry. Go ahead. Ah. Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, Eldritch Blast. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can do the Eldritch Blast from like 120 feet away. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, if you don't want to get up close, you don't have to. Although they're gonna have a hard time hitting you now because of your cloak anyway. Yeah. Okay, so roll the hit. Ah. Seven. Okay. Um oh seven. That I think that misses. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh wait, no, their armor class is seven. Oh yeah, it you is? Hit, you hit him. Oh. Okay then. Yes, yeah, so the zombies are eight. The the, the demons are seven. They're just kind of blobby things that move really slowly, so they're easy to hit. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and then, uh, so I gotta roll the hit, uh, my damage. Yeah, roll the, roll the damage, 1d10. Yeah. Seven, eight, nine, so ten. Okay, ten to demon five. Okay. Yep, you, uh, you tore a big put a big hole right through him. Uh, he's still, he's he's kind of reeling. Oh wait, do I hit plus three or plus five? Oh, is it is it plus three? It, it says, says 1d10 plus, plus three. Yeah. And you rolled what? Seven? A seven. Yeah. Okay, plus three was, yeah, so you did ten damage. Cool. Okay. All right, and who's next? Tressa. Okay, well she's not going in that cloud of daggers. <laughs> uh, but she could still hit uh, demon number nine there, so she's going to do that. I'll just let I'll just use her her rolls here. Okay. Twenty four hits and eleven damage. Zombie nine. I think that one is already dead. I 
Yeah. So if Zombie 9 is already dead, I think she's going to go around and hit this one for 11 damage. Okay. So, Rob, can you get rid of Demon? Oh, I was looking at zombies. That's why. Oh, my God. Ugh. Demon number. Okay, she's going back to where she was. Sorry. I'm confusing myself. Okay, she hit that guy for 11 damage and he died. Demon number nine is dead. Okay. Uh, after Tressa... Are the zomb now the actual zombies, not the demons. It's their turn. So we'll start with number one, who's going to attack Chertovir again. He missed. Zombie four heads up to uh, Zoe and attacks her. Uh, 16 to hit. Does that hit? Yeah, armor class is 14. Okay. All right. That's uh, three damage. He, he punches you. And then the rest of them are going to just move. If I don't know how many zombies are left. There are some that were just on the backside there. I think in games and movies, people always like gloss over the fact that zombies are rotten corpses, and it should be super disgusting and, and really smelly when you're finding them. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Be all puking all over the place. That would be really gross. Do a constitution check. Yeah. Well, these ones are pretty clean because they've been in the they've been uh, in blood. They've been taking a bath for this whole time. They smell like pennies. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so Tressa is going to fly over here and shoot the one the zombie that's attacking Chertovir. Not Tressa, uh, Magira. So that's a hit. So six damage to zombie one. So she'll shoot him again. Also a hit and 11 damage and he's dead. And she's got one more arrow that she can fire. And she will shoot at the demon that's coming towards Ralph. Natural one. Okay, that's awesome. Critical fail. Ranged weapon. Oh, she hits an unintended random target. Everybody within 10 feet of that one, which would be only Ralph or the zombie. So, yeah. She hits Ralph. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, no. Okay. I'm sorry, Ralph. <clears throat> this is going to hurt a lot.
So you take uh, 11 piercing damage, you get hit in the back with an arrow. And... Fifteen poison damage. Oh, is Ralph gone? Yeah, I sent a message in both chats. Uh, he had to run to make tea. We're gonna switch. He'll be back in just a second. He's here. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. So you're you're taking damage, Joe. Oh, just as an aside, um, I do have a spell for. Um, people who have been poisoned so oh. just kind of FYI if someone can so get you... me over there to him <laughs> okay where am I All right, I'm being hit by this asshole yeah no, okay. no you got uh, Megara rolled a critical fail on one of her arrows she was shooting at the demon in front of you and she hit you in the back you can't sorry so she's got uh, she did um 19 plus 11, 23 damage to you. Hold on. Oh my god. <laughs> oh wait, that would be with disadvantage. Well, no, because she wasn't trying to hit you. Yeah, it was a, yeah, so it would, that wouldn't. It knocks me down to eight. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, at least you're still up. And it's not continuous poison damage. It's just the, just the one time. Okay. Well, yeah, I just, yeah. So that knocks me down to eight. And since wow. I got, and since I got hit with friendly fire, uh, where am I? Hold on. Let me look where I am on the map. Shit. And it's Chirt over here is next. And these are all demons and zombies, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's nothing I can do. Okay, so up in the corner, Cherdovir has a zombie uh, in front of him attacking him. And another zombie just cr ran up and started uh, swinging at Zoe. Okay. All right, so zombie one. Um, once again, I'm going to roll to hit him with my sword. Okay. And look at that, I got 25. Yeah, that definitely hits. Was that a natural Was that a, a natural 20 then? 18 plus 7. Oh, okay, so no. All right, and how much damage? The damage is 4 plus 4, 8. eight. Okay. All right, that zombie is dead. You, yeah, uh, take sliced, that undead creature. You you sliced his face off, and his face falls down on the ground in front of you, and he falls Ew. back down into the into the river. I look at the face and I go like, "That reminds me of something." <laughs> yeah. Ugh. And. Now is the demon's turns. So what's left is just, uh, from what I see here, it's three demons, right? Four. Uh, oh, yeah, wait, and, and there's one, another zombie. one zombie that's attacking Zoe, too. Got it, got it. What's that attacking, Ralph? <clears throat> uh, there's a demon below him. Oh, I see. And a zombie. There's another there. zombie next to him, too. There's a zombie oh, with a I thought that suit was just and rocks. a red tie. Oh, I see it. Zombie number five. You know what I did? I couldn't see it because it looks like the rocks. And zombie number six is wearing a suit and a red tie. Yeah. So the demon comes up to, to Ralph and starts attacking him. Oh, my God. He's rolling with disadvantage because of your cloak. Or does that only work until you get hurt, right? My cloak? Yeah. Let me see. I think it only works until you get hurt. Cloak of displacement. Uh, while you wear this cloak, it 
projects an illusion that makes you appear to be standing in a place near your actual location, causing any creature to have disadvantage on attack rolls against you. If you take damage, the property ceases to function until the next start of your next turn. This property is suppressed while you are incapacitated, restrained, or otherwise unable to move. Oh, okay. So it's kind of been your your uh, cloak kind of got stunned and it's not working for a minute, for a second here. So he got a uh, fifteen to hit. So I think that hits. Uh, fifteen. Yeah, it hits. Okay. Dead. He does. He doesn't do a lot of damage though. I'm he does already one at eight. point of <laughs> one point of damage. Oh my god, guys! I'm starting to flash red here. This one's going to attack Musette. Uh, 13 probably misses, right? I think your armor class is higher than that. Uh, yeah, my armor class okay. is 17. Okay. Yeah, he missed. And this one, I'm going to look at there and if you see if he's smart enough to. Uh, get out of the cloud of daggers. He takes the damage at the start of his turn. Oh, he does? Yeah. Oh, he's dead then. He doesn't have time. He doesn't get a chance to get out of it. Well, he already took that damage. This is supposed to because I did it early. So he already took that damage. He's down to three hit points. So his intelligence is is a one, so it's a minus five. He's dumber than an animal. So I guess I'm going to say it's like a DC 10 to see if he's smart enough to not go through the daggers. He went, he's going through the daggers. He wants to go the, the quickest route and he takes that damage and he dies. Okay, and that's it for those guys. Wait, did number six didn't do anything yet, right? He's going to attack Ralph. And he missed. Oh, okay. Um, it's now the spider's turn. <clears throat> and kind of like a water skipper, the spider kind of just uh, gingerly walks across the, the river of blood and comes over by Musette and attacks this uh, number six. That's useful. Should have asked her for a ride. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wow, well, both, uh, both of your allies, ally, uh, creatures have gotten critical failures today. So, well, that hits. Ten, Ten damage to that. Number six. Okay, and Musette's turn, and then Zoe will be after that. Um, so seven is what doing his own thing. 
Yeah, seven is in the is is in the pool of fire, and he reached out and and attacked you, but he missed. Oh yes. Okay, well, I'm just gonna shoot him. Okay, with your gun. Yes. That is. All right. Roll to hit. Uh, twelve. Do I do the hit DC also? Uh, yeah. So, okay, so seventeen total. Okay, yeah, that definitely hits. Uh, two d d six plus three. Okay. Six, Eleven, fourteen total. Oh, you killed him. Yeah, you you blew his head off. They have thirteen hit points. Okay, so yeah, demon number seven is dead. And now it is Zoe's turn. All right. Uh, since number four is still, unfortunately, hanging around, um, I'm going to go ahead and do guiding bolts on him. Okay. Just to get him out of my face. No. So, ten. That hits. All right. And uh, sixteen damage. Oh wow! Yeah, that hurt him yeah. pretty badly. And uh, he's glowing, so the next person that attacks him will have advantage. All right. And then it is Ralph's turn. And Ralph is uh, Ralph is hurt really bad. You got an arrow sticking out of uh, in between the fingers of the the hand on your back, uh, right in between your shoulder bl shoulder blades. Uh huh. I'm not a happy camper, and I don't give a fuck about anybody right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use Fey Presence. I don't care that this giant okay. spider's behind me. Okay. And, and, and what does that do? Fey Presence. I can either charm these guys, anybody within a ten square radius, or okay. or make them frighten of me. Okay. And I want to make these guys. Uh, I don't know. Hold on. I want to make them go away. Okay. So uh, is there a is there a saving throw for that? I'm looking at, at here it is. Okay. Oh, it's under my actions actually. Fey presence. Once per short rest as an action, you can cause each creature in a ten foot cube from you to make a wisdom saving throw DC thirteen or become charmed or frightened by you, your choice. Okay until the end of your next turn. We'll start with the spider. Uh, DC 13 wisdom saving throw. Yes. He failed, so he's afraid of you. Uh, Musette, you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Musette will make a one when she gets back. She's... Okay, well, yeah, we'll come back around to that. Yeah. Um, and then the demons... Their wisdom is not very good. And there's two of them. Demons aren't wise. Yeah, actually, though, uh, one of them made their wisdom saving throw. So number number uh, five uh, is not afraid. And the zombie, what zombie number is he? He's zombie five. So he's not afraid nor charmed by me. Right. So zombie five has to make, and he he failed. So zombie five failed, and uh, demon six failed, and the spider failed. So they're all afraid. Okay. And Musette has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay, Musette's on. Musette's on her way. Uh, five. Okay, so you're uh, you're also afraid of uh, now. You're afraid of of. Um, well, Musette Ralph. could be just Musette could be just charmed by me. Well, I think I think you have to choose one for everybody. <laughs> oh man, I have to choose one that fixes so you, them all. You chose fear, right? Yeah. Because you want them to get away from you. Right. So Musette is afraid also of Ralph. 
So that means you can't get any closer to him, and you have disadvantage attacking him. And your cloak is working again now. Oh. Because it's your turn. And All right. so, yeah, and then after doing the, my Fae Presence, I can't, well, since people are going to be leaving, well, I have to wait till they actually move away from me, correct? Right, and and uh, was that, that took an action to do, right? That was an action to do, so yeah. who's moving away from me? Next. Uh, I'll, uh, everybody except for Demon 5. Uh, Okay. Well, then I will just wait. <laughs> okay. So, um, this guy is going to attack Dresco with disadvantage. He missed. And it's the start of his turn, so he gets ground up by the uh, daggers and he's dead. That's number eight. And this one is afraid, so he's going back into the into the river. Opportunity attack for me. He got yeah. out of my reach. I'm gonna yep. shoot him. Go ahead and ro roll roll the. Well, it has to be with a melee weapon. So if you have it, like something in your hand or you. It does say melee. Yeah. Uh, no, not melee. Okay, so moon touch sword. DC. Okay, uh, roll to hit. One d two six or six two d. Uh, I rolled a three. And then that's you, three. You gotta roll the hit first. Oh yeah, yeah. Roll the hit. Sorry. I'm excited. I rolled a ten. Oh, uh, that hits. Cool. So three damage. Yeah. Such a good kitty. Wait, wasn't there a bonus for three. the damage? At oh, all three, for that? three plus two. Yeah, three plus two, so oh. five. Okay. So and he is number six. Okay. All right, that one takes took a, a hit, and uh, num the zombie is going to go into the river and attack Zoe. Opportunity or attack. Actually, you know, you only get one of those per round. Ah! I want to kill you, him. You 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 get one reaction per round, and then that's used up. Okay, so he he. Well, actually, he's going to decide to. Own this going to figure out if he's gonna, he's going to attack Chertobir. And he got a natural one with his fists. So now I get we got to see what he does. Man, we've had a lot of uh, critical failures. Okay, so when he swung at you, he slipped in the blood and fell down on his face. And he took three damage from the from falling on his face and he's lying prone in front of you. So that's zombie uh, five. He's hurt pretty badly. Okay. Pressa is going to go this way. 30. And uh, to protect your friends. These other zombies are going to start moving. There aren't that many of them left. Oh, and with Zombie Six was 
was he running away from Ralph? No. He hadn't gotten there yet. No, he's not close to me. He, he didn't get close to me. Yeah, so now he's uh, coming after you. And he has to roll with disadvantage to hit. Oh, wow. I think he actually hit. He got a 18. You take five damage from getting punched by the zombie. Oh, hold on. Five damage? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and uh, this other zombie by Tressa is going to, I mean, by Zoe is going to attack. I 18 to hit, so I think that hits. And uh, you take three damage from a punch, zombie punch. You're, t that's, you're talking to me, right? Yeah, Zoe. Okay, that's, that's what I thought you said. I just want to make sure. So three? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And that's it for the zombies, and now it's Megara's turn. Hopefully she won't uh, get a critical failure and shoot anybody else in the back. He says, what is this trickery with your cloak? You made me shoot you. And uh, she's going to uh, fire at the zombie that's next to uh, Chertovir. So that hits. Nine damage to zombie five. These zombies have letters on them. That's why it takes me a while to... Okay. And she'll shoot him again. That hits. And he's dead. And then she's going to shoot at the ones that are menacing Ralph. She's going to fly over this way. She's got one more attack. Hits and four damage to demon number five. And that one is dead. <laughs> okay. Um, Chertovir's turn. Ready. So I'm going to go try to attack. Can I move five feet and attack the zombie number four that's attacking uh, Zoe yeah. Mason? Yep. Cool. Let me move towards him and rotate and i try to slice his head off with my sword so let me roll okay. for a hit roll to hit okay he has the guiding bolt on him too oh you yeah you have advantage so you can roll twice and take the better one <laughs> i don't think i need it i rolled well, 13 if plus you roll seven. again you might get a critical hit okay so this one was 13 plus 7 20. let me try yeah. rolling again uh no, this one's 10. Definitely yeah, okay, so go with the 20. One, yeah. All right, roll your damage. Okay, roll my damage. Six. Okay. So that zombie, yeah, you, you sliced his head off. It yeah. uh, goes tumbling down on the, into the rock. Always there for my Zoe. Yeah. We're a team. Jericho squad assemble. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, um, Veer says, I'm I think an alligator I... variant. I'll just have you know. <laughs> what was that? Uh, I'm an alligator variant. Oh. Marvel, get out. <laughs> My character says, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. 
All right. And I do a little um, flourishing thing with my sword. So this one <laughs> is afraid of Ralph. So he's got to make like a wide arc because he can't get any closer to Ralph. Okay, he just goes that way in the fire. It's he's kind of hard to see too because of the flames coming up out of the river. And that's the only one of those left. And now it's Willem's turn. Willem's going to go across the river here and oh, he's afraid of Ralph. I don't know if he's going to protect Ralph if he's afraid of him. But he might go down here and attack one of these two zombies. That hits. Five damage to zombie number eight. So many zombies. Okay. Um. Musette's turn. And Zoe will be next. So do I need to move away from Ralph? Or is Ralph far away now that I'm not scared? Well, um, do, so on the on your uh, Fae presence, do they have to, do they get to re-roll every round to see if they're still afraid? It doesn't say. And, uh, it just says uh, from you to make a, every creature in a 10 foot cube uh, from you to make a wisdom saving throw uh, be mm -hmm. to, or become charmed or frightened by you and your choice until the end of your next turn. Oh, okay. okay. So so she's, yeah, yeah so it's not the end of his next turn yet. So you're still, you can't get any closer to Ralph. Okay, but like being scared of Ralph doesn't affect, for example, if I want to shoot demon number six. No, no, you can do okay. that. Then I just want to shoot demon number six. Okay, uh, roll to hit. Uh, plus your to hit bonus, right? Or is that total? Uh, 10 total. Oh, so that hits. Okay. Uh, what does this say? 2d6 plus 3. Yeah. And, oh, duh. Four, ten, a 13 total. Okay, that one dies. Uh, so demon number six is dead. Do you want to do anything else? Move anywhere or use any bonus actions or anything? Nope. Thank All you. All right. Then it's Zoe's turn. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm trying to look your seat. Okay, so, sorry, I'm trying to blow up my map so I can see it better. All right, so really, so did you say six was dead? Uh, e let's see. Zombie, right. zombie, zombie alive. six is still is still there. Okay. I think de demon number six just died. Oh, okay. All so... the de all the demons are gone. Three, four, five, six. Okay. And we can go six squares, correct? Yeah, if you can go 30 feet. One, yeah. two, three, four, five, six. Turn her around here. All right. And let's go with... Oh, what the heck? Let's do another guiding bolt. Get rid of okay. this. Zombie Aww. number six. 
10. 10, I think it's still, yeah, that's still gonna hit. Okay. And four damage. 19. Wow, wow. And he's glowing, so the next person that attacks him has advantage, and he's hurt really bad. And he's hurt really bad. You, uh, you blew off his, uh, his arms and his business suit. This has been an ad for Men's Warehouse. <laughs> yeah. That's that's what he gets for being a professional zombie. Yeah. When the demons are dead, the Jericho Squad will walk the hell. That's right. There there was one of the uh, one of the tokens in in that set that I got was called the Opportunist, and it was this guy in a business suit talking on a cell phone. He might show up in okay. hell. Yeah. Uh, so the harpies are dead. It's Ralph's turn. You've got zombie number six who's glowing, so he's really easy to hit if you want to hit him. And he's hurt really bad. He's got no arms, and his suit is in tatters. Yes, I want to maim him. Okay. But uh, I won't. I'm just going to be safe and use my Eldritch Blast. Okay. Um, you can back up if you... Well, that would give him an opportunity attack. So I would just, yeah. Okay, you're going to shoot him with Eldritch Blast? Yeah, and I rolled a five for damage. You got to roll to hit first. Yeah, I rolled a hit, I mean. I rolled a five. Five total? Uh, well, five plus, what, what is my thing? Five plus uh, three? Yeah. What, what does three. it so say eight. on hit it's, DC on the spell? It, it's a eight. Oh, hit DC? Sorry. Five, so I rolled, I guess, a ten. Okay, that hits. Yeah. So, Andy, I, how much damage did you do? You said. Hold on, my I gotta roll. This one. Six. No wait. Which dice do I roll? Ten. D ten. D ten. Sorry, I'm losing it. Ten. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one died. Yay. <laughs> and actually, you had advantage to attack him, but you hit him anyway. So. Okay. And he's dead. Um, so after Ralph is Tressa's turn. She's not afraid of Ralph. She's gonna run right past Musette and attack this uh, zombie number nine here. And she's going to use uh, another divine smite. So 15 hits and 10 damage plus Wrathful Smite. So she does 12 damage, okay. On zombie number eight. Who is already in half? Okay, he's hurt even worse, and uh, he just kind of flips over on his back on the ground. And now it's the zombies' turns. So Zombie Eight is going to get his revenge and attack Tressa. Or he's gonna try, and he he missed because of the disadvantage thanks to this spell. And this uh, is that zombie seven. Yeah, he's gonna attack. I guess Willem. Uh, plus three is thirteen. Yeah, he missed. And that's it for zombies. And the Fury Magara is going to go She's 
gonna fly over here and land next to Ralph. And uh, oh, she's got her swords ready to protect Ralph from anything that comes. So she's holding her action. And now it's Chertovir's turn. Well, since uh, it seems that um, there's nobody here to fight on my side, um, can I cast... Uh, I cast... Ooh, let's see. I'm going to cast the uh, Tensor's Floating Disc one more time. Did you do any concentration spells after the Floating Disc? Because that might still be there. Oh, no, with that Booming Blade one was a concentration spell, I think, right? Right, so I dropped that okay. spell to, to do the Booming okay. Blade. Yeah, so you got to do it again. Okay. Okay, well, oh, here we go. That's another slot. And I cast it. Uh, okay. And I transport myself over the Blood River. Okay. Okay. There we go. And I will... Do I have to do anything special for that? Uh, no, but it, it, I think what's the, it, does it have a, I think it has the same speed as you. So you you can go 30 feet, right? And yoink. Yeah. There we are. Cool. And, uh, okay. Can I still send it back for Zoe? Uh, you can, I think you can start it going back, but it'll, um, yeah, you used your action to cast the spell and your movement to move over, so it'll have to start heading over on your next turn. Okay, so I'll just stay where I am. Sorry, Zoe. And now it is Willem's turn. It's going to go over by Megara and hold his turn and get, and get ready to protect Ralph. And Musette's turn. So Ralph has had a turn now, so you're not afraid of him anymore. Okay, so I can go past him. Uh, what do we have here? I just see a seven. I, I Oh yeah, there's a there's a zombie seven and a zombie eight, and that's it. Oh, okay. Um, let's see. So I guess I'll just move closer so I don't hit anybody. Okay, so oh, that's shoot. your okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Rob just put the floating disc on the map. Hey, oh. thanks, Rob. Uh, so shoot with my pistol, zombie seven. Okay. Ah, shoot. I guess that counts as a roll. Uh, I got a one. Plus five, so I got a six total. So that's a natural one, right? With your gun? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So roll a 20 sided die. 16. Uh, you, you hit an unintended random target uh, within somebody within 10 feet of you. So let's see, one, two, three. Hope it's not me. Uh, so roll a 10 sided die. Okay. Uh, You're too far away, uh, Chirgu Yeah. Here's the 10. 10. Okay, uh, you hit... Were you aiming at zombie number seven, right? I was aiming at zombie seven. But you actually hit zombie number eight instead. So that's pretty lucky. Yeah. Okay, uh, roll your damage for your gun. Uh, six total. 
Okay, and no one will ever know that you didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> Yay, thank you. That's uh Okay, that one died. So zombie eight is dead. There's only one zombie left. And Zoe is next. Let's see. Um, one, two, three. All right, I'm gonna put him down. And let me see. I think I am going to do a spiritual weapon. Okay. So uh, nine. Okay. Okay. That hits. That hits. Oh wait, the spirit. Okay, oh, so wait. spiritual weapon appears on the screen. Uh, oh, it, does it look like another one of your daggers, like or what does it look like? Yes. Okay, so that appears like next the, to you, and it can move and attack as a bonus action. And damage on that will be twelve. Okay, so that flies over to zombie number seven and attacks him. Uh huh. Yep. Okay. Uh, roll to hit, roll the to hit. Oh, that, that's what, oh wait, you what already did. Never mind. Yeah, roll yeah. the damage for yeah. The the damage was twelve. Oh, well. That one had not been hurt yet, actually. So that that uh, put a big gash across his stomach, and his innards start to droop out. Hey, nothing like innards. Yeah. It's like Ralph's turn. It's outards. It's yeah. my turn. Better, better innard than outard. Did you say it was my turn? Yeah, Ralph's turn. Oh, so far away. <laughs> well, I mean, there's really nothing much I can do. You you can walk through your allies. You can go through their spaces. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hey, buddy, zombie. Elders Blast. Okay, rolled hit. That's an 18. That hits. Okay, roll your damage. 5 plus 5 is 10. Wow, okay. Oh, wow, that's exactly how many he had. So that zombie, uh, you, you uh, Eldridge Blast... Eldridge blasted him right in the neck and his head kind of spirals off into the into the river and he flops down. Sweet. Yeah, so uh, you guys are out of combat now and and uh, and Chertovir, if you want to send your disc over to Zoe and bring her over, you can do that. Let's do that. Yes, please. I forgot my tide stick. <laughs> you got it. So uh, let me move over to where you are so I can be within 20 feet of you right there and uh hop on all right you non-heretic <laughs> that's she's in the blood yeah oh, i think it's hard i think it's it's hard to put them to, to move them together yeah she's, just stepped in the blood just gonna yeah. oh yeah there we go okay okay so now you do have this kind of uh lake of fire with and it's it's got a pretty high wall of flames uh, around it. Okay, this is starting to get a little hot here, huh, guys? Yeah, yeah. It, it's not hurting you, but uh, it, it would probably hurt if you went through it. So, ideas? Because I only have two uh, spell slots left. I got a cantrip for Ray of Frost. Does... Uh, I, I, I cast Ray of Frost and try to make a bridge on the lava. Okay. Yeah, uh, make um, let's see, make an arcana check. Arcana check. Yeah. Come on, baby. 
I got a 15, 10 plus 5. Okay. Yeah, with a 15, you did manage to make a, a bridge, but it was only about one one square into the, you know, five, mm. so five feet of it. Okay. So if this you is do it again, unholy you, lava. maybe you could, uh, you could add on to the bridge. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a cantrip. I can cast as many times as I want, so yeah. sure. I can try doing okay. that, and I, I, I tell everybody, come on, when the bridge is up, uh, we got to run real fast. Okay, so in... Uh, another Arcana check? Yeah, another Arcana check. You got it. And and Willem just kind of walks through the fire and goes uh, over to the other side. I hate that spider. Willem. Uh-oh. <laughs> This okay, one is so, why I hate spiders. Yeah, th- that one uh, didn't see. It started to make a part of the bridge, but it uh, it, it kind of crumbled and melted into the fire. Yeah. Okay, guys, bear with me. I, I try to focus. Let me do another Arcana check. Okay, there you go. Twenty-one. Oh wow! Yeah, with a twenty-one, you managed to uh, create the bridge all the way across. All the way. Cool. Yeah. All right, you, you don't know how long it's going to last, but uh, but it's there. All right. Let's go. Let's go, everybody. Come on. I'm, okay. I'm... So everybody that wants to run across the slippery ice bridge over the Lake of Fire needs to make a uh, make a, an acrobatics check. Hey, it shouldn't be slippery that, ice. It should be cold rock. <laughs> that's a 20 sand dice. Uh, uh, acrobatics, you said? Yeah, an acrobatics check. So yeah, 20-sided die plus the acrobatics skill bonus. They have a 23 total. Okay, so Zoe made it across easily. I mean, not Zoe. um, Musette. Musette. I have a 23 total. Okay. Okay. I got I know, I I only got a seven. Uh Uh-oh. Total, I got 17. Ralph. Okay, yeah, you you made it across. Okay, Ralph can go across. I got 23. So yeah, you made it, and Tressa, I better roll, roll for her. Uh, Tressa started to go across, and she slipped. Idiot. <laughs> Tressa. Yeah. So she takes six fire damage. Jeez. Oh boy. She's gonna cook in that armor, and uh, so she she just sprints and bolts across through the fire and and comes out the other side. Fire. And uh, so Zoe, I know Zoe also fell into the into the fire. You you had like a seven, right? Yeah. Okay, so you take take also six fire damage. Okay. And if you if you want, you can just just kind of power through it and run through like Tressa did. Okay. All right, get on there. And you won't take any more damage. Sorry, my mouse is acting kind of weird right now. Let me yeah. stop on the screen here. I whisper oh. to everybody: Don't turn your back on Magira. <laughs> okay. Ralph heard me. I did. She says, All right, my heretics. You've made it across. Uh, the, the next level down will be the, the level of frauds. Oh, man. Should we take a short rest? <laughs> You could do a short rest as an hour, or, or uh, and and you can use your hit dice to uh, to heal yourself. And some people, like Ralph, would get his spells back. You used, yeah, you did use a spell. I used one. Yeah. yeah, but you only have like two spell slots, I think. Yeah. So Ralph would get his spell slot back, but for most people, a short rest doesn't get you your spell slots back. It only you can just use your hit dice to heal yourself. Right. I only have one. So, spell or you slot can, left. or if you want to go to sleep again, but it, or you know, or just take the day to rest and then go back in. I lied. I have four spell slots. Sorry. Um, it's kind of risky to sleep while being watched over by a winged demon. That's true. Yeah. 
we uh, need to keep going. <laughs> yeah, do, do you say that out loud to her? Uh, yes. No, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> okay. no. Um, I, I, I tell people, can we, can we huddle here real quick? Cressa says yes. Okay, and I say, okay guys, um, this is not super safe for us to rest here next to this lava. You know, zombies might show up from the lake of blood. What do you guys think? Should we try to check out what's the next level and then maybe take a short rest? I think that's the best idea. Works for me. Okay. Chris says, I mean, um, do you, do you say mm -hmm. that in a way that she can't hear, that Megara can't hear you? Yeah, I try to huddle with them and, and talk oh, to okay. them privately. Okay. So, uh, so I turn to Megara and I say, uh, uh, lead on, Megara. Okay, we, so she, we, she goes down, down the stairs. Okay. All right, and let's go. Uh, Will, Willem goes down the stairs with her. Okay, so they're they're going first. Yeah. And uh and I guess it's like let's let's see if there's a place we can rest down there. Rest down there. Yeah. So and and at this point um I think Rob had to go. So we'll um we'll we'll kind of cut it off there and we'll save the next level for uh for next time. Lock is up. All right. So nothing happens right, until we job, get to the guys. other side. Right. <laughs> No, nobody went unconscious or anything either. It took okay. a while to uh, to to warm up, but uh, I mean, mage armor is awesome. I only got five points damage. I only got bonked twice. Yeah, you're right. Oh damn, I'm I'm down to two hit points. Really? Jesus. Yeah. Well, and that was mainly because of an accident. Yes. So now uh, now you guys Magira know how dangerous. Yeah. Now, now you know how dangerous Magira is. Well, I guess just remind me because, like I said, I had more slots than I realized. Oh yeah, I had oh, healing okay. word, and I don't have any slots there. So Ryan, we're not going to do any sort of rest, right? Uh, not right now, because you just you guys just went down the stairs, and we'll kind of stop it there. Okay. Okay, uh, so we just exit, exit, and we'll just save it. Yeah, and then we'll so we'll uh, we'll see what's down there on the next one, and deal with resting and stuff then. Sounds good. Wow. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I missed Brant a little bit. I did. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. He would He would be distracting them. Yeah. But uh, thanks, guys. This this was really fun. I'm, yeah, uh, I think we did pretty okay without having Brant. I was pretty nervous because yeah. he's been helping us so much. <laughs> yeah, you guys did great. <laughs> and and I, I, was, uh, I was hoping that you would... Uh, that you would take her with you instead of fighting her. The Bagheera? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think you maybe Bagheera. could have beaten Bagheera. her, but it would be really tough. Yeah, the, the reason I didn't was because uh, I just, I thought she wasn't coming at swinging, you know, like like Musette said, like Catalina said. Yeah. She wasn't swinging at us, so I was like, let's see where this goes. And she says she's going to protect the heretics. And I'm like, why not? And well, she did I help. I still don't trust her. I don't trust her either. <laughs> yeah. That's why I keep saying, don't turn your back on her, you know? Let's, yes. let's just see what we can do. I don't know how we're going to get a rest in the next level uh, with her watching over us, but, you know. Because, we'll... honestly, what better way to win your, your devotion than to sacrifice a few stupid zombies? I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, and the next level is fraud, so. Exactly! Right. Yeah. And the bottom is betrayal, so. Yeah, we're gonna right. have to figure Thanks, out how Jesus. to heal up, and uh, <laughs> we're gonna have to figure out how to heal up and uh, and and get some spells back, just in case. Okay, I gotta go check on River. <laughs> All right, All right. Thanks, guys. well, thanks, Bye. guys. This was fun. Okay, stay tuned for the next episode of uh, Jericho Squad seventy seven. And this podcast, Bye. having no beginning, will have no end. Technical producer Rob Danhauser. Score Imagica Cradle of Chersemet by Ben Warren. Character design Asya Yordanova. And Bird Ninja Art. Additional illustration by Richard Kirk, used with permission. 
You can find the show notes for this episode and join the discussion over at www.clivebarkercast.com. We've got an archive of past episodes, news, features, and reviews, along with all the ways you can connect with us. You can subscribe on every other place you can find podcasts. Share your thoughts with us and share our podcast with your friends. The Clive Barker Podcast, or BarkerCast, is an independent editorial podcast and news blog that's not affiliated with or under contract by Clive Barker or Seraphim Inc. This is a labor of love by the fans for the fans. Thanks for listening.